Hello, my name is Super Hadley, and today we're doing another version of GP Plays All the Games, this time with the Utopia Jam. The Utopia Jam was a game jam with the theme Utopia that had to do with fiction and writing, I believe. I'm playing all the games that are into this jam in this video. Links to individual games in the description so you can check them out further, and all my info will also be in the description so you can check me out as well. Thank you very much for watching, liking, and commenting. We're playing Tenderfoot. We can just kind of look around, and that's it. Ooh. Just kidding, I clicked on something. That's weird. It's just like a little water dropper that kind of like swam out. It was fast that time. Okay. Kind of looks different when I look at it. This is just a view, I guess, into the city. Kind of interesting, very green. I almost wish I could see more. Hmm. It's kind of relaxing. Next, we're playing Holt. Alright. It's about time to go. Do you mind making the trip today? What trip? Okay, that's all they say. Alright. Enjoy the morning. Alright. These are two little sleepers. Okay, goodbye sleepers. I like my character. They're very, very cute. Oh. I didn't actually expect to be able to just go up that way. To a window. Now I kind of feel like I have to. Because it feels like a secret. Sometimes I come here to think. The vines have been growing since I was a child. They burrow through the black rock and eat the sunlight. Grandmother spoke of many plants that once covered the land. Grandfather spoke of rain, which choked the life from them. Now there are only vines and ash. All right, so it's like a little side area almost. Holt is home to all. Hey look, some vines. Ah, oh, how do you get to read it? The vine pierces the black rock and in its reach for sunlight. Alright, sorry, I didn't mean to read it that many times. Valley ash tree. Let's go this way. It's a very another very relaxing game. I guess all of these games are gonna be quite relaxing. Next. We're playing Utopia, an essay. Utopia is an idea of a place defined primarily by its distance. Right, there seems to be woods all around, so we're going to like, walk through this place and read bits of it. We are comforted by this distance. It frees us from responsibility. We are not guilty of not pursuing something that is unattainable. Modernity conceives utopia, first of all, as distance in time. Utopia is situated in a distant future, often a future that cannot be bought, brought about by positive action in the present, a future that can be brought about only after some destructive rapture or vast empathy. I'm going to go this way. To this one on the wall. Distance in space is naturally surmountable. If utopias exist elsewhere rather than elsewhere, there is an intolerable demand that we pursue them. Furthermore, future utopians carry with them the comforting idea of a future state where all of humanity is lifted together into you know, utopia. I hope I'm reading this in the right order. The identification of utopia with the future is itself a fairly recent phenomenon. In the past, the existence of frontiers and homesteading allowed not just for the imagination of utopias that would exist parallel to the contemporary world, but for practical utopian projects. Terraformation allows us to imagine utopia as a distant, generations-long project that we would never be personally responsible for. It's a pretty interesting essay, and I like the way that it's delivered just in this room that we're sort of exploring around.
next. We're playing One Day in Utopia. Hello. I talked to you. Yeah, okay. Phew, I was so full. Thanks for cooking dinner tonight. It's nice to have a hot meal after doing some intense unpacking. Offer to wash up. That's right, you've done a lot today. Why don't you relax and take a walk while I handle the dishes? It'd be nice to introduce ourselves to the neighbor. Alright. Sure. Dinner looks like it was tasty. Just the door? No? Okay. Let's explore around. Wow, our bedroom's got a very nice window. Not a whole lot of color in here, though. Oh, everyone's outside. Let's talk to this guy and his son. Hi. Okay, maybe not. Let's talk to this person. Painting. Nope. Okay. Sure. I have this couple sitting here and reading. Nope. Okay. I like the graphic style. Just not sure who I'm meant to be talking to. Oh, it's E. That's the issue. Okay. The small child looks really shy as you approach. Her parents welcome you to the community and tell you that she needs some time to get used to new people and things. Right, let's, try, let's try again talking to things. Sorry. Child. So then suddenly a monster came up from underground and ate up all the people. Sounds terrifying. Aren't you afraid that monsters might gobble you up from under, gobble you, up from under you? No, because the monster isn't bad. It's just scared and lonely. Greet them. Good evening. You must be the new tenant. Welcome to our little community. I hope you'll have a good time living here. Hi, where are you from? Um, a town nearby to the east. Ah, my sister lived there with her son. I heard they had to close the community down because of recent flooding. My sister wanted to come here, but they moved her further east. Child, my cousin's name is Anton. Did you know, do you know him? Um, sure, I used to babysit him. Ha, I bet he was a right rascal. That kid had all the energy of a space rocket. It used to take my sister all night just to get him to bed. He must have given you a lot of trouble. Let him continue. Anyways, it was very nice meeting you. I'll let you get back to your stroll. My son is really excited about this movie he's been watching, and I think he wants me to play monster with him. You have a good evening. So just interacting with some people in my new, my new house. Hello. Oh, okay. Painter is concentrated very hard on his painting. Clouds, lined, leaves. Introduce yourself. Oh, well, hello. Sorry. Very interesting. I kind of like the the graphic style and the choices that they picked. Next. We're playing SPUD, S-P-U-D, which stands for System of Peace for United Domains. Hi, Captain. You're awake. I'm SPUD, System of Peace for United Domains. Let's get you out of here first, then we can talk. There should be a couple of buttons behind you. One of them should open the crypto lid. Keyboard and mouse, or an Xbox 360 controller. There is an Xbox 360 I'm gonna use that. Alright. So for Windows, it might work with other controllers. Move to joystick, interact with X, look around, blah, blah, press interact to dismiss the. Alright, look down, interact with X. Okay. We got the status okay, door locked. Ah, oh, wait, we've only met. No, 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 no. I didn't mean to. Oh, well, uh, I guess. Ah. Uh. Well, I guess I'll store the captain in the warehouse somewhere and maybe make a display in the museum. Is that it? You can even use the ship as the room for the exhibit. Let's see, we'll need to clean it first. Is that it? Oh, uh, it's just because I picked the wrong one. Lame. There's six other endings, though. You should explore it. <laughs> Next. We're playing Utopian Jam. The store you run is right downstairs. You barely need to move to get there, but it's 8.30, and you're still in bed, and the store opens at 9. It should open at 9. You've always opened at 9. Today shouldn't be any different. But the right half of your bed is empty, and it's hard to want to wake up. Still, you crawl out of bed. In the shower, you toast some bread. There's an open jar of orange right side of the bed, marmalade in the fridge. New experimental. You made it just last week. You spread it on some toast, and you take a bite. Warm hands from a warm mug, sunshine filtered through the curtains, a stretch, a laugh, a sleepy kiss on the nose. You breathe it and come back to now. The memory preserved in that jar is faceless enough, anonymous enough to work in lifting your spirits. If you don't think too hard, you manage to trudge down to your little shop downstairs and flip the sign open right at 9 o'clock. Utopian jam open. 
The first customer of the day walks in at 9.15. You've only had a chance to clean up the front a little, to place the jam jars, labels out in tidy little lines. She walks in, the bell clinking above the door, then shutting neatly behind her. She looks straight at you, hesitant to look around, to seem out of place. A key card hangs from her lapels. She hasn't slept in days. She's definitely a first-timer here. You smile and try to look disar- disalarming. Disarming? Welcome to Utopian Gym. How can I help you? They say, she trails off. They say, they say, they say. She looks around now, at the rows of pre-made jams on the wall. You know the flavors that catch people's attention. You got an A+, plus, hugs from a friend, warmth on a cold night. People don't come to Utopian Gym for raspberry, even though your raspberry jam is fantastic. They say you can preserve memories. Her fingers run over labels for Eureka. That's right. I also make jam. You know she's not here for one of the pre-made flavors, and you can't decide if the work is welcome for the distraction or not. I want to save something, she says. You figured. What do you? What do I need to do? All you need to do is tell me the memory. Really feel it. Or you need to tell me the memory. Really feel it. Relive, relive it. I'll turn it into jam. That's all? He. Like that was something small. That's all. You get an empty jar ready. Hold out your hand. She takes it. Okay. Start at the beginning, you say. My name is Leah. I'm an engineer down at the solarium. I was working late. I'm a bit of a perfectionist, and the project I'm working on, they aren't quite working right. I remember being frustrated, just jittery and angry. I can't get it. I must have had at least five cups of coffee, which might not have helped. And then my boss walks in and just sits down, looks at the mess in front of me, and says, Okay, we can do this. Like, it's that easy. And we did it. It's not finished, but we had a breakthrough. We did it. And I want to remember that, that feeling that I can actually get things done. The project. Tell me about your project, I say. She hesitates. I, well, I can't tell you much. It's confidential, and no offense, but it's some pretty deep tech stuff. But the overview is that I'm working on nanomachines that can help heal bones, like broken bones. Yeah, and brittle bones, and arthritis, and all sorts of stuff. It's pretty complicated, and it keeps me up all hours. But I really feel like we're doing something good, you know? Boss. Tell me about your boss, I say. This is a pretty interesting concept that I'm making jam out of people's thoughts. Imagine if I could actually do that. That'd be really cool. Next. We're playing how to grow a fully organic starter home in your backyard sporting boring hut in under one month let's go greetings grower how should we refer to you miss grower eventually you just get sick of living with your aunt and uncle there isn't a lot of room in their attic and it would be nice to have your friends as roommates you tell them no offense guys but i'm gonna grow my own house i understand i totally understand your aunt says everyone needs their own space i'm not offended your uncle tells you you can use the fungus plot out back it's not hard once you get the hang of it I grew that old lawnmower out back myself, your aunt boasts, and before that, I'd only ever grown socks. You get the hang of it, I'm sure. You went from socks to a lawnmower, but I'm supposed to just start with a house. Ugh. The next morning, your uncle takes you out to see the run-down old sporing shed behind the main greenhouse. Nobody's been in here for a while. Um, there's only about 20 square feet of growable space in here, but if you build the walls in small enough chunks, it's more than enough space, he assures you. Your aunt has a lot of recommendations for websites to download fungi form patterns. You're gonna need nails, screws, shingles. Look, I'll give you a list, she says. You're gonna need hammers, your uncle shouts in the kitchen. You're gonna need, like, several hammers. They break, your aunt explains. The strains we have here make good walls, but hammers are stretching it a bit, to be honest. Eventually, you find a plan for a simple one-story organic house in mushroomhouse.blahblahblah.com. The ingredients in this list are a little daunting. 20 buckets of nails, 5 buckets of screws, 5 hammers, 2 screwdrivers, 40 wall panels, 10 bales of shingles, 6 units of insulation, 50 beams, 13 bales of carpet, 20 windows, 7 doors, 30 miscellaneous fixtures. You gulp. You don't even have patterns for carpets, windows, screwdrivers, fixtures, or or insulations. Ask around, your uncle suggests. I'm sure someone in the neighborhood knows how to grow a carpet. Soon you're on your hands and knees in the sporing shed, trying to figure out how many wall units you can grow at once in a growing space only half the size of a maggle cab. You check your list to see what patterns you're able to find. All right. You've got 20 square feet of grow space. What do you grow? All right, let's do a bunch of nails. One, two, three. Let's just do all of the nails first. Oh, I can't do it. All right. Two, four, six. Um... Confirm. Everything's successfully planted, and now you're covered in sweat. It's been a long day of tending to your mushrooms. 
Come on in for dinner, your uncle suggests. The fruits of your labor will be ready in the morning. Or the fungus. Ha ha ha. Now you go to bed. You've got to rest for another day in the sporing shed. It's morning, so it's harvest time. You now have four out of twenty, three out of five. Uh, I have an extra hammer. All right, let's try to do two screwdrivers today. I feel like I need some paper. Let's do where? How do I do a screwdriver? I don't actually have a thing for a screwdriver. Check your inventory. Let's do some nails. Let's just go down the list. Oop. Let's do nails. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What? How many do I need? Eight, nine, ten. So I have enough screws. Two screws. Nine, ten. I need two more hammers. Um, hammer plants. Let's do a fungal wall as well. No, no. Okay, maybe that'll work. Phew, plant it. You're down at the lake, relaxing by the water with a couple of friends, and some dude you've never seen before comes running down the beach with a bunch of soggy carpet in each hand. Hey, hey! I hear you're growing a house, he shouts at you. Oh, yeah, you splutter. Who's this guy again? You want carpet? he asks, brandishing the swatches in his fists. Both of them are so fresh you can still smell the soil. One of them is striped pink and the other and green. The other is vaguely worm colored. Maybe? He offers to trade you five of each color for a pair of hammers. I'm going to try to build an interior decorator. Yeah. Sure. He makes your entrance meet later today and trade you. This is a pretty interesting game. I very much like collecting and growing my own stuff. It's kind of bizarre, but good. Next. We're playing Paradise Inc. Are you ready for the perfect getaway? Sick of crowds getting in the way of your holidays? What if you could go to a beautiful destination reserved just for you? Introducing Paradise Inc. a whole new world of entertainment and relaxation. With our patent pending planet building system, we create entire planets from scratch and make them available for you for any purpose you desire. A family holiday, the next work trip, or somewhere to indulge in the thrill of the new. Which destination will you choose? A beautiful beach world, a discreet forest hideaway, a clifftop retreat with views that wouldn't see anywhere else? With Paradise Inc., Anything is possible. As our newest employee, you'll be working at the cutting... Oh, I thought I was going to go on holiday, but I'm an employee. Edge of multi-dimensional biological sculpting. Using our patented pending Kickstarter TM system, you'll create an entire universe parallel to our own, nurturing them from their inception to maturity. Entire galaxies, stars, solar systems, and planets will be under your control as a guide... As you guide worlds to their destiny, luxurious holiday destinations. Please make sure to read all of the health and safety material and agree to all the terms and conditions, blah, blah, blah. But I think will not be held legally responsible, blah, blah, blah. Let's begin. Creating worlds was a misnomer. There's nothing remotely creative about it. I was a button pusher of the lowest order, dolefully stabbing at screens at uni as universes came and went with as little regard for me as I'd learned to have for them. All the more reason to get it over with. Let's make a world. All right, let's start the software. The way Icon spins listly, listlessly for a couple of seconds before giving way to the Universe Manager screen with its choice of dimensions. It's technically possible to have all six running at once, but you quickly discover that it's easier to focus on one per day and just rotate through them. There is also a problem with Universe 4, so you dropped it out of the rotation entirely, leaving you with a neat five universe to manage, one per weekday. Anyway, it's Monday, so you click on Universe 1. You're pressed, uh, presented with a new screen displaying information on the universe you initial, uh, initialized last Monday. Hmm. Lots of hydrogen, helium, carbon. This universe might actually support life. So much for getting out of here early. Accelerate time. Interdimensional travel has been possible for decades now, but it was almost useless until we figured out how to control the time and place we'd traveled to and visiting other universes. No use leaping into another dimension if all you'll find is there is the detritus of a still nascent universe, as our unfortunate early explorers quickly discovered. Once time-space control was established, it didn't take long for tech people to realize they could drop some scanning hardware into a universe early on in its life, then use that to check up on the universe's progress throughout the millennia. This rendered the dangerous expeditions moot, as you'd know well in advance if the universe was habitable or not. And now the technology is becoming more affordable, startups and venture capitalists are sticking their oath in, which is how Paradise Inc. came about, a travel agent offering a choice between dozens of perfect worlds. All you need is for some poor scrub to trawl through the theoretically infinite number of universes available and pick out all the good ones. Well, a paycheck's a paycheck, right? You click on the time scrubber. So I can go to different time periods. Again, another very, very interesting game. I kind of like the idea of making and deciding if these planets are good enough for people. Next. We're playing Connection. Okay. 
I don't know what the graphics are. Okay. How do I do this? I saw like a little family picture. It kind of highlights in green if I go to the corner. What do I do? Alright. Sort of pressing buttons and hoping one of it does it. Oh, when I do that, a light shows up. Oh, well, should have just walked forward. I'm an idiot. Okay. So many different options around here. What about other options? This one? This one? I want to kind of go down, actually. Seems to be some sort of story being told here, and I bet you if I figured it out, I could go lower. But I really have no idea. Weird. Next. The last game that we were going to play this game gem was Green Koi, but it says that the current game is too rough to show off. To. So, it was supposed to be a tabletop role playing game about a group making their way through the wilderness, telling tales of past and the future of their community. So, it's like for three to six players, and it requires a two sided die, blanking decks, cards, and rain utensils. Sounds like a very interesting game. Um, I'm sad that there's not more for me to read about it. Anyway, if you'd like to check out any of these games, feel free to do so. And thank you very much for watching, liking, and commenting. Bye!